Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting the Steam Deck OLED up against the all new MSI Claw. And if you're familiar with the new MSI Claw, you know they make two different versions. The version we're taking a look at in this video has that Intel Core Ultra 7 155H, so it is the higher end version. If you're interested in seeing a comparison between the Steam Deck and the 135H version, let me know in the comments below. But I really wanted to do this because I've had a lot of people asking, and of course, whenever a new handheld is released, it's always compared to the Steam Deck. And I wanted to see if this could be the end performance and battery life. Not sure what's going to happen here, but uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. There are a few things to note before we get started here. When it comes to the MSI Claw, we have the MSI Control Center. From here, we can adjust our power levels. The lowest that we can go right now from the MSI Control Center on the MSI Claw is 20 watts. Now that's just kind of a manual set limit. 20 watts, up to 40 watts plugged into the wall, or up to 35 on battery. Now we definitely want to kind of get close to the battery life that the Steam Deck's put now, and we know that the Steam Deck only runs at a TDP of 15 watts. With these benchmarks, we're going to take a look at the MSI Claw at 20 watts, and we're also going to be testing at 30 watts because I really want to see if this can outperform the Steam Deck at a higher TDP. And I kind of threw a bunch of different stuff in here just to give you a look. And by the end of the video, we're also going to take a look at overall battery life with both of these units. Now, before we jump into it, just wanted to give you a quick rundown on the specs here. When it comes to the Steam Deck OLED, we've got a custom AMD APU with four cores, eight threads. It boosts up to 3.5 gigahertz, RDNA 2, eight CU iGPU up to 1.6, 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 at 6,400 megatransfers per second, and a beautiful 7.4 inch OLED display at 1280 by 800. Also have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.3. On paper, the MSI Claw is loaded to the hilt. We've got that brand new Intel Core Ultra 7 155H, 16 cores, 22 threads. And with this, we get six performance cores up to 4.8 gigahertz, eight efficiency cores up to 3.8, and two low power efficiency cores up to 2.5. That brand new Intel Arc iGPU up to 2.25 gigahertz with eight XE cores, 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 at 6,400 megatransfers per second, a 7-inch, 120Hz IPS display at 1080p, and this does have Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. Of course, the Steam Deck is running Linux, Steam OS, and the MSI Claw is running Windows 11. So yeah, I mean, if you were to look at both of these on paper, you'd be like, I'll choose the MSI Claw just because it definitely looks like it's going to outperform what we've got over on the Steam Deck OLED. Coming in with a 4-core, 8-thread CPU, and the GPU is based on RDNA 2. It is getting a bit dated, but with optimizations, the Steam Deck is definitely one of the best performing handhelds on the market. But now it's time to get into some game tests and see how these really do compare. But the first game we've got is something that definitely runs really well on a lot of APUs out there. I consider it an easier to run game. We've got Forza Horizon 5. And like I mentioned, we did drop the Steam Deck down to 720p just to kind of make it fair. If I could have run the MSI Claw at 800p, I would have done it, not a problem. Over on the right hand side, MSI Claw with that 155H CPU at 20 watts, and again I'm testing at 20 and 30, but it still looks like the Steam Deck is beating out the MSI Claw with this game here. Because at the end of this benchmark, on the Steam Deck OLED we had an average of 55 FPS, on the MSI Claw at 20 watts we averaged 50, and taking that MSI Claw up to 30 watts we did average 60. So yeah, I mean, double the TDP there did beat out the Steam Deck. Not by as much as I thought it would, though. Moving over to the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 720p medium. Again, Steam Deck OLED on the left. We've got that MSI Claw on the right, and with this, I just kind of recorded the 30-watt footage just to give you an idea. And you know, going into this game here, I thought the Core Ultra 7 155H at that much higher TDP would be beating out that Steam Deck by quite a bit, but unfortunately it's not. On the Steam Deck, we had an average of 45 FPS, MSI Claw at 20 watts, average of 38, and at 30 watts on the MSI Claw, average of 42. So the Steam Deck at 15 watts beat out the Claw at 30 with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Moving over to something a bit harder to run, we've got Red Dead 2 720p low, and I'm going to tell you the truth, I've never tested this on the Steam Deck. It's not Steam Deck verified, but it is in the playable section. A couple bugs here and there. But uh, at 15 watts, it looks like that Steam Deck's doing a pretty good job. Over on the right-hand side, MSI Claw at 30. 
At the end here, Steam Deck averaged 52 FPS. MSI Claw at 20 watts, we had an average of 48. And at 30 watts, MSI Claw did beat out the Steam Deck, coming in at an average of 65 FPS. Next up, we've got Horizon Zero Dawn, and I've been doing testing on these Arcai GPUs for about two months now. I've never really seen great performance out of this game on these new iGPUs, and uh, even at 30 watts, the MSI Claw is struggling a bit with this game. We're at 720p low with no scaling. And it's actually pretty insane how far the Steam Deck is ahead here because uh, we had an average of 61 over on the Steam Deck OLED, 20 watts on the MSI Claw, we only averaged 32, and at a 30 watt TDP, 46. I also went back and tested this at 35 watts on battery. We only had an average of 51 FPS. I also went through, tested out Borderlands 3, and yeah, the Steam Deck does outperform the MSI Claw by quite a bit with this game. I was testing at 30 watts. I also went through at 20, but I only got an average of 31 FPS at 20 watts with the MSI Claw. So yeah, I mean, that Steam Deck definitely dominates with Borderlands 3. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. Running that MSI Claw at 30 watts. We're using the Steam Deck preset, so this does use a little bit of FSR. It's actually set to balanced. I didn't go through and change FSR to XESS with the Intel Archive GPU because it really doesn't make much of a difference between the two. So I figured we'd go ahead and keep it even here. And I will admit with these Archive GPUs and even the desktop Arc GPUs, we have had issues with Cyberpunk 2077. It's definitely gotten a lot better with the new Intel drivers. But I mean, even with the MSI Claw running at 30 watts, the Steam Deck still comes ahead with Cyberpunk 2077. On the Steam Deck, we had an average of 50 FPS, MSI Claw at 20 watts, only an average of 27, and at a 30 watt TDP with this benchmark Steam Deck preset, 42 FPS. So obviously, when it comes down to it, MSI and Intel have a lot more optimizations to do with the new Archive GPU. Seeing that the uh, Steam Deck is so well optimized, and I know it's been on the market for a long time, but this is the go-to handheld. This is the one that everybody compares every other handheld to. So I figured we'd go ahead and put these together. And it looks like even with that MSI Claw busting out at 30 watts, the 15 watt Steam Deck OLED still outperforms it. Now the next thing I wanted to take a look at was power consumption and battery life between the two devices. And to do this, I ran the Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark at high, just kind of giving an idea of what kind of battery draw we're getting from each of these devices. And as we know, the Steam Deck OLED is battery life king. At full boat, even with the brightness set to 100% on the OLED screen, this thing only pulls around 23 watts in total from the battery. On the MSI Claw, 20 watt TDP, 100% screen brightness, we're pulling close to 27 watts, so I'm just going to call it 26 and a half on average. And at a 30 watt TDP with that MSI Claw, we're pulling around 35.5 watts of power from the battery. And this is total system power draw, so we can use some simple math to kind of calculate what kind of battery life we're seeing here. And remember, this is flat out for the OLED Steam Deck. This is all the performance we're going to get out of it without updates from Valve. It's got a 50 watt hour battery. We can get around 125 minutes of runtime out of the deck flat out. And that's really great for a device like this. Much more lowering that TDP playing indie games. With the MSI Claw, we've got a 53 watt hour battery. And at a 20 watt TDP, we can get around 120 minutes of runtime. At a 30 watt TDP, we can get around 89 minutes of runtime. But with most everything that we've tested so far, the Steam Deck with better battery life and lower TDP on that APU is outperforming the MSI Claw. And I really do hope to see some major updates for the Claw because I love seeing new competition hit the market. I love these new chips and, you know, coming out of the box with this was really hoping for better performance, especially at those higher TDPs. I don't mind sacrificing a little bit of battery life for better performance, but I mean, even at that higher TDP, really hard pressed to play a lot of these games like the Steam Deck does and still get really great battery life. I'm really hopeful that we will see some updates from Intel and MSI that up the performance on this. But you know, one thing that I've been kind of digging into is just the amount of cores here. 16 cores, 22 threads, and running this at 20 watts, it does kind of seem like, you know, everything's going to be fighting for that little bit of wattage that we have there, especially with the new Archive GPU. So I've been experimenting with parking some of these cores and totally disabling some of them. I will have an updated video coming up, but you know, I wanted to show you how it worked directly out of the box compared to the Steam Deck. And yeah, I mean, that Steam Deck is outperforming the MSI Claw. 
But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you've got any questions, just let me know. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.